She's alive.
save the Russians. Hoping to save those guys, but it didn't work out that way. I almost saved them. Yes. Uh, what are your problems? Damaged eye. Now that we're back at the camp, I want to talk about what happened at Redcliffe. Okay, what's up, buddy? I just wanted to thank you. You went out of your way to save the Arles family, and you did it. Even though it would have been easier not to. There's been so much death and destruction. It... well, it, it makes me feel good. But at least we were able to save something. No matter how small. I owe the Isle that much. You're right. Hopefully, by that time, there's still enough of Ferelden left to save. Good. Now that the warm, fuzzy part of the day is over with, we can get back to the ritual dismemberments. Oh, wait. It's not Tuesday, is it? What do you need? Ask away. Cyclone, my naked villain. Here I am. Oh, this should be good. What would you like to discuss? Here I am. Oh, this should be good. Go ahead. Well. The Crows would have you believe that it is an involved process that takes years of training, the sort that tests both your resolve and your endurance. Survive that process and maybe, just maybe, you're good enough to start being considered one of them. But quite frankly, the truth is that all it requires is the desire to kill people for a living. It's surprising how well one can do in such a field. Now, now, it need not be thought of so crudely. We all do our share of murdering around here, don't we? An assassin simply specializes in striking from stealth, and in maximizing that first attack to be as lethal as possible. Debilitate your foe, either by poison or by crippling their limbs, makes any follow-up combat you need to engage in that much simpler. See? Getting paid for the act is beside the point. An assassin is more a tactical choice than a lifestyle. Of course, the crows like to pretend that their abilities are trade secrets, shrouded in shadows and wrapped in a blanket of mystery. So let's just keep this between you and me, shall we? Hmm? Have you encountered many abominations, apart from the ones in the Circle Tower? Ah, yes, Connor, of course. The first time I saw an abomination, 
my blood turned to ice. It was months before the nightmares stopped. It was the knowledge that I could easily become one of them that frightened me the most. One slip. All it takes is one slip, and everything you are is simply gone. Replaced by madness. And there is no turning back, or at least that's what they say. Of late, I have begun to wonder if... if there is any way an abomination can be... cured. Or, if a mage could be so possessed and still retain their sanity, their humanity. Yes, it is madness and cruelty that define abominations. If those are lacking, if the mage remembers the person they truly are, then they are not an abomination. I never saw that. Thank you for showing me another way of looking at it. Is there something you need? The circle is in good hands. Irving knows what to do, and he doesn't need me underfoot. For now, I will support those that battle the Darkspawn. I do feel I left things unfinished in Ostagar. There is so much left to do. And I would be part of it. Yes, I did leave them. But if the blight is not stopped, all of them will face suffering greater than what was seen in the tower. The Grey Wardens, all two of you, need all the help you can get. I will see this through to the bitter end. And after that, if I am still left standing, then I will return to the Circle. No, of course I don't. I'm old and unsure of what I'm doing. Actually, I'd rather be in a warm chair in the sun, being served pudding, or some other easily digestible food. Well, get on it then, and make sure there's a blanket in my chair, and that it's soft, and that the pudding doesn't have cream on it. Cream gives me gas. <laughs> The stars are out. It comforts me to know that the stars will remain untouched by the blight. That whatever happens down here, they will shine eternally. Their light undimmed. There is a story about that cluster of stars over there. Do you know it? Elindra and her soldier? A long time ago, there lived a fair maiden called Elindra. She had many suitors, but spurned them all for she did not love them. One day, Elindra was sitting by her window in her father's castle, singing and dreaming, when her lovely voice caught the attention of a young soldier. Entranced by her song, the soldier drew near to Elindra's window. As their eyes met, he fell in love with her and she with him. When Elindra told her father about the man she had chosen, he was furious. For Elindra was high-born, but her love nothing more than a common soldier. To keep them apart, he had Elindra imprisoned in the highest tower of his castle, and sent her soldier to the wars. Alas, not a month had passed before news of the soldier's death reached Elindra. Alone in her tower, Elindra wept for her love, and beseeched the gods to deliver her from this cruel world. So earnest was her plea, that the gods themselves were moved. They gathered Elindra into their arms and lifted her high into the heavens, where she became a star. The gods also raised up the soul of Elindra's soldier love, and there he dwells, across the horizon from her. The band of stars between them is a river of Elindra's tears, cried for her lost love. They say that when Elindra has cried enough, she will be able to cross the river to be reunited with her soldier.
This story is one of my favorites. A tale of a love so great and so enduring that it defies death and moves the gods to action. Sometimes I ask myself, does such a love exist? Can it exist? I think I would be lucky to experience an emotion even half as pure and true as Elindra's love. Yes, it is, isn't it? You are my friend, and I love you, but I'm not quite ready to cry a river of tears. What do you wish of me? If you must. A little backstabbing never hurt anyone. <laughs> See if I can really hold my own ground. Useful little trick. Oh! 
Gas trap. That's cool. More mage boots. Any more dexterity? Oh, what is this? Rogue has a keen eye for weak spots. everywhere uh, so a spider All right. oh this one's where it collapsed Just want to go talk to Flemeth. It's not, you know, not much to ask. And so you return. Lovely Morrigan has at last found someone willing to dance to her too. Such enchanting music she plays, wouldn't you say? Oh. How interesting. Speak then. You have come far, and I am nothing if not hospitable. <laughs> oh, I do like that. Ah, but it is an old, old story. One that Flemeth has heard before, and even told. Let us skip right to the ending, shall we? Do you slay the old wretch as Morrigan bids, or does the tale take a different turn? Truth, she says, as if it were nothing. No, no. Far better the lie. Far better the comfort of blankets and shadows and a mother's love. Morrigan wishes my grimoire? Take it as a trophy. Tell her I am slain. Really? I go. Perhaps I surprise Morrigan one day. Or I may simply watch. It would be interesting to see what she does with her freedom. Enlightening, even. Would you give an old woman that? We believe what we want to believe. It's all we ever do. Ah, uh, since it's Diana. Since it is Diana, then yes, we will do that. It's far easier this way, don't you think? The lies are always more fun. The book is inside the hut, with notes and spells enough to make even Morrigan blush with delight. You and I will not meet again. That, I guarantee.
short bow. Rose of possession. Change your mind already? I change knickers less quickly. Wouldn't we all, alas? Back to this again. Sabres rattling and jaws firmly planted on the floor. Oh, do something. Then do leave an old woman in peace. So many visitors. Next, they'll be putting in a road, maybe an inn. Mm. <laughs> All right, Flemeth. I will leave. You get what you want. What do you wish of me? If you must. <laughs> well, that depends, does it not? What does she seem to be? You mean, is she truly the Flemeth of legend and story? Tell me, how much do you know of the tale? The one that the Chastened still tell of my mother? to frighten them into obedience. I can relay what Flemeth once told me herself, and you can decide whether or not tis the truth, if you desire. As the tale is sung by the bards, there was a time when Flemeth was young and beautiful, a fair lass in a land of barbarian men the desire of any who saw her. The tales say that Flemeth fell in love with Osin the Bard and fled the castle of her husband, the dread Lord Conobar, and that he swore vengeance for her infidelity. In truth, my mother claims that t'was Osen who was her husband, and Conobar the jealous lord who looked on from afar. Lord Conobar approached young Osen and offered him wealth and power in exchange for his lovely wife, and Osen agreed. The life of a bard is a poor one, and love fades in the wake of hunger. It was Flemeth who suggested the arrangement. All would have been well had Lord Conobar kept his end of the bargain. But he was a foul man who bargained with coin he did not possess. Osen was led off to a field and slain, left for dead. Flemeth spoke to the spirits and learned of the deed, and swore revenge. That was not the point. Conobar had no honor, so she would not have him. Flemeth begged the spirits to aid her, and twas they who slew Conobar. The demon the legend tells of came later. Lord Conobar's allies chased Flemeth, you see. Chased her to the wilds, and there she hid. There she found the demon, and he made her strong. The legends all speak of the great hero Cormac, he who defeated Flemeth and her great army when she invaded the Lowlands centuries later. All lies. The truth of the matter is that there was never an invasion. As Flemeth tells it, the Chastened never raised an army under her banner and she never fought with any warrior named Cormac. 
Cormac led a brutal civil war against his own people and later claimed it was to vanquish evil that had taken root amongst the lords. Thus, he was hailed a hero. Flemeth was only attached to the legend much later. Perhaps it was due to the great war with the Chastened that eventually came, but Mother claims not to know how it began. I do not believe everything that Flemeth claims. Often it seems her bitterness has colored her memories. But on the whole, yes, I believe this tale, if not all. Flemeth tells it with far more embellishment than I, but you are welcome. Dare I ask of your own mother? Few are abominations of legend, tis true, but I find myself curious nevertheless. I... nothing. I wish to know nothing more. I find myself a little envious, to tell the truth. But it matters not. Let us move on. What do you wish of me? We are in camp, so tis as good a time as any. the crushing look on her face uh, okay so I'm trying to think here's a grimoire yeah. <gasps> mother's real grimoire is it I am glad you were able to find it after all my thanks for retrieving it. I shall begin studying it immediately and unlock the power that it holds. Minor magic. Good with that. Morgan, you have new robes. Don't want to take this away from you. Nothing for you, buddy. I'm sorry. Quote is two willpower, magic, defense, health regeneration, armor. Spell power. Go. Anything I can do for you, please, please tell me. 
I'm sure you'll be pleased with the goods my boy and I have collected. And with your discount. Man, with your discount. What do you need? Red Cliff Shield is amazing. Chance to just bounce something off. Thank you so much. Or not. Why, thank you so much. Nope. Why, thank you so much. I shall treasure it. Yeah, Thank you. Go. Yeah, you like gold. You have excellent taste. You and your friends are formidable folk, indeed. It's good to have you along on the road. I'm sure you'll be pleased with the goods my boy and I have collected, and with your discount. Options, options, options. Could have sworn there was something. Maybe I'm just completely. Settled, food, dinner, and then we'll be back. Hopefully I can play an hour before friend time. <laughs> 